Hi everyone, this is a Google in Education presentation on Google Apps for Education and other Google EDU tools. We're passionate about the tools and programs that we have to offer to educational organizations and even more excited to share them with you today. So your school or organization wants to go Google. We're here to help you navigate through the implementation process, share best practices, and point you to helpful resources to help you implement Google's suite of education tools with ease. Let's get started. So what does it mean to go Google? Well, for starters, you need a good reason or two. You'll need amazing tools. You need devices to access these tools. You need content to enhance learning. And you'll need a community of people to help support and train your users. In this presentation, we'll be covering these basic needs to help you move forward. Let's start with the reasons. At Google, we believe that the web is the best platform for learning. Here's why. Think about how teaching and learning has been evolving. 10 to 15 years ago, most of our research was done using traditional books. I'm sure we can all remember the pains of not being able to check reference materials out of the library or the inconvenience of having to trudge through the rain, snow, or humidity to get to a building to look up some information. Now we're living in a world with Google Glass, technology that allows us to access the world's information through simple voice commands. Imagine, as a student, I'm taking a field trip across the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City. All I have to do is ask Glass my search question. In this case, how long is the Brooklyn Bridge? And instantly, I have my answer. And that's just the beginning. Let's think about the web and all that it allows us to do. It helps us to extend learning beyond the classroom. As educators, we've always been concerned about differentiated learning. Our students learn better at different paces and through different modalities. The web lets us teach our students through video, text, images, interactive drill and kill type applications. Whatever they need, we can assist with. The web also gives us nearly unlimited learning opportunities. A simple search on the solar system leads to almost 300 million results. We now have the wealth of information in the world at our fingertips. The web also allows us to enable learning anywhere, anytime, on any device. Learning is not just happening within the four walls of the classroom anymore. Whether our students and faculty are doing work at home, at school, or in the library, or at a student center, learning is ongoing. Secondly, the web is the best platform for learning, as it makes it easy to engage everyone in the school community. Families are more involved. Gone are the days when the only feedback family members received was twice a year at a parent-teacher conference. With a couple clicks of the mouse, you're able to share documents, websites, presentations, or grades with stakeholders. We're working with a military school in Texas in which most of the parents are deployed in another country. We're proud because parents are able to stay up to date through docs and hangouts, making sure that every child takes ownership of their work. Additionally, there are increased communication and collaboration options between people within the school community. As a school director or superintendent, you can share important information with everyone at your school instantly. Teachers and professors can hold virtual office hours. Students can communicate with global pen pals. There are many modalities for communication and collaboration on the web. The web also allows for dynamic learning environments. You're no longer just engaging people at your school or in your local community, but you have access to different communities around the world. Take, for example, the Google Street View project. Not only can we explore our own neighborhoods and communities, but we can take virtual field trips to communities in the Amazon and Antarctica. If those reasons aren't enough to want to make you move to using Google tools at your school, we have one more set. Using the web helps prepare students for their careers. Working with technology is becoming the norm. Take a second to think about the last task you did at work that did not involve some sort of technology. We want to prepare our students to work at companies like Google, and millions of high-tech jobs won't be able to be filled if we don't prepare properly. 
beyond high-tech jobs. Restaurant owners, architects, public servants are all using technology on a regular basis. However, we don't want to focus on teaching our students how to use devices or programs necessarily, as we all know how fast technology can change. In essence, we want to prepare our students for the workforce that they will enter and equip our teachers with the right tools for the workforce they are in. This workforce is increasingly collaborative, global, team-based, and project-based. Working on the web can help develop these skills. Lastly, having a web presence is becoming more and more important in life. We want our students to not only be good consumers of the web, but also creators of the web. This is an example from Point England School, New Zealand. All students have a blog in which they're able to share their best work with the world and create a strong digital footprint for themselves. So you may be thinking to yourself, this all sounds great. How do I get started? Well, the next part of the presentation will guide you through the solutions Google has to offer in the education space. Primarily, you should start using Google Apps for Education. They're the right tools at the right price. It's completely 100% free. And at the price tag, you're able to save money for more innovative projects. Take, for example, the University of Ferrara in Italy, who saved over 60,000 euros per year by using Google Apps. So you may be thinking, well, if it's free, then I might be getting what I pay for. But don't fear, you're actually getting access to amazing tools. You have Gmail with 25 gigabytes of mail storage so you can keep all your messages and find what you need fast using Google Search within your inbox. Calendar allows everyone in your school domain to sh share schedules instantly. Drive gives you nearly unlimited space to create native Google Docs and 5 gigabytes of additional cloud storage. The real-time collaboration features in Google Docs are the heart of our EDU offering. Google Groups allows you to create groups and work in teams. Talk gives you the ability to instant message, audio or video chat with your colleagues and peers. And Google Sites allows you to make and manage your own websites without having to know any HTML or coding. These are the core services offered with Google Apps and are covered by the Apps for Education Terms of Service, which we'll talk about more later. Not only do you have access to these core services, but you can also enable or disable the wide range of additional Google services like Google+, Blogger, Maps, and more. These apps can be turned off and on by organizational unit. Most importantly, these apps allow us to innovate in our classrooms. Entire science projects can be solved using Google Forms and Sheets. Teachers can administer assessments using Google Forms. Faculty members and counselors can create appointment slots and calendar. And anyone can invite guest lecturers into their classrooms using Hangouts or Google Talk. Students can host their ePortfolios online using Google Sites. These are some of the very few ways that we're seeing apps implemented in schools and universities. For more ways, check out some of the other presentations listed here. Don't take our word for it, though. Edmonton Public Schools is an example of one school district in which teachers have seen an increase in engagement, collaboration, and project completion rates by using Google Apps. Having great tools doesn't mean anything if our users can't access them, though. You don't have to worry because Google Apps is always up and running and ensures a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. If there are any issues or disruptions, you can check google.com forward slash apps status for updates. Google Apps for Education would also be useless in schools if it wasn't secure. This is why we take many steps to ensure that your data is secure, and we want to be completely transparent about our privacy and security policies. We've worked with many IT teams around the globe, and for the most part, school data is either hosted on-premise, on school servers, or in the cloud, or a combination of both. 
Along with thousands of businesses moving to the cloud, we're also seeing thousands of schools move to the cloud. Schools and organizations are moving to the cloud because historically, security was really tough. Users have much of enterprise data hosted unprotected on PC desktops, laptops, and thumb drives. Unfortunately, when one of these devices gets lost or stolen, the data that resided on them is lost forever. Has anyone ever had a device with data on it get lost or stolen? I'm sure it's quite a few of you. Also, since faculty members and students are often working off of different devices in different places at different times, it's important to be device agnostic. Working from the cloud helps you do this. In Google's case, this means massive data centers built for scalability, security, and efficiency. We set out to build an environment to run Google.com. This means we have hundreds of thousands of identical servers that replicate your data. In the event that one server goes down, you don't have to worry because the data is also hosted on another. All of this data is obfuscated at rest, which ensures that no human eye would ever be able to read it. We also don't have any third-party security issues. When you leverage our services, this becomes your IT environment. In terms of privacy, we want you to know that your data is safe, secure, and in your control. Google Apps for Education is governed by a detailed privacy policy, which is different from the Google Consumer Terms of Service. In it, we state that you own and control your own data, not Google. There are no ads, and we don't sell your information to third parties. We are FERPA compliant and are registered with the US-EU Safe Harbor Agreement. And if that isn't enough, there are additional amendments on data processes and European Union model clauses that you can agree to in your control panel. So we have strong infrastructure security, high reliability, and also security at the message level. Spam and virus filtering is built directly into the tools so you don't have to worry about buying additional third-party software. In the primary and secondary space, we recognize that it's important to filter out inappropriate content. Thus, we've included built-in inbound and outbound lexicon filters. You're also able to create a walled garden to restrict email to an approved set of domains. To access these settings and more, visit Settings and then click Email in your control panel. If you're in the market for a cloud-based archiving solution, Google provides one with Google Apps. It allows you to archive and discover mail and chat messages and integrates directly with Google Apps for Education. For more information, you can check out the Vault site. So hopefully by now you'll agree that Google Apps for Education is comprehensive enough for all your communication and collaboration needs. In the next few slides, we'll dive into how to get started. Google Apps is simple. Since our engineers take care of all the server and system maintenance, it's easier for you to set up and manage. For larger systems that have a lot of servers and systems to manage, you don't have to worry about patching software and installing upgrades. This frees up your IT time and money. It's easy to sign up. Simply visit google.com slash a slash edu. In the top right hand corner and other places on the page, you'll see a button that says Get Apps Today. Click there. There are three pages to the sign up form. Please keep in mind that you should only sign up if you have access to your school or organization's domain. You will be the domain administrator for your Google Apps account. The first page asks for general information about you and your school. The second page asks you either register an existing domain or purchase a new one. And on the third page, you'll choose your Google Apps admin username and prove that you're not a robot. Once you have done all this, you will be placed on the Business Trial Edition. We know it may be confusing, but we want to make sure you get the Education Edition. To be upgraded to Education Edition and given the ability to create a virtually unlimited amount of users for free, please fill out this upgrade form. Once you're on the Education Edition, you can start your basic technical deployment. There are six main things you'll want to think about as you deploy and set up apps. The first thing you'll want to do is come up with a deployment strategy. 
the smoothest deployments have always been planned. We have several guides to help you think things through. Next is your organizational structure and domain names. You may want to keep your production name for your faculty and add a subdomain for your students. This is mostly done for branding. Organization units are needed for differentiating policies. For example, you can restrict email delivery and which apps are turned off and on by OU. You can map your OUs to the structure of your directory system and we'll explain more about that later. Then you want to think about mail flow. There are ways to set up mail flow directly to Google, which is the simplest and easiest setup. Or perhaps you need dual delivery so that mail is delivered to your legacy email system and another filtering system or archiving server. There are ways to set this up. Next, you want to think about creating users. For small institutions, under a thousand or so, you can bulk upload your users in a CSV file. Most institutions use the directory sync tool. This tool allows you to automatically provision users in Google Apps based on information in your LDAP server, like Active Directory or eDirectory. For fancier user provisioning, you may also want to look at the provisioning API. Some schools choose to use this API to create users from their SIS or LMS. You may need to think about migrating your data. We have tools to help you migrate your mail, calendar, and contacts on either the server side, which is you as an administrator, migrating the data, or the client side, so making the end user migrate their own data. Finally, authentication will be your last step. If you want your users to log directly into Google, then you don't have to think about authentication. However, we do support SAML based single sign-on solutions. If this all sounds kind of confusing, don't worry, we have many implementation partners that will be happy to assist you. Feel free to search through the Google Apps Marketplace for contact information from our trusted partners. Additionally, we have a support team at Google dedicated to helping you 24-7, 365. You can visit our help center, email us, or call us at any time with your issue and we're happy to troubleshoot with you. The best way to prevent issues is to be prepared. You'll want to stay up to date on any changes to the product. Visit whatsnew.googleapps.com for a calendar of new releases. If you're still tuned in, we've chatted about the web and Google Apps for Education. In this next section, we're going to hone in on devices, particularly Chromebooks. It's important to remember that Google Apps for Education is device and browser agnostic. So whether you're using a laptop, desktop, or mobile device, your Android, iPhone, or BlackBerry, you'll be able to access your data. However, we did want to take some time to talk about Google Chromebooks. Chromebooks are web-based computers that are great for schools because they are easy to use, easy to manage, easy to customize, and easy to scale. With Google Chromebooks, we're helping you to unlock the world of the web for your students. We've designed Chromebooks in education to be practically invisible in the classroom. We believe that technology should be a tool to help you teach, but nobody is going to use a tool if it's too difficult or time consuming. With Chromebooks, students open the lid, sign in, and are up and running in under eight seconds. The Chromebook has an eight hour battery life and connects directly to the web to save valuable learning time. Beyond that, once signed in, the devices are incredibly simple to use for both students and faculty. Chromebook adopters say that they love the device because they just work. When you're using Chromebooks, everything is stored on the web, so it doesn't matter which machine you use. With Chromebooks, the focus isn't on the technology. It is on the user. When your students sign into any Chromebook, they're taken to the learning experience that you've designed for them based on your curriculum goals. Management is also simple on the IT side. With Chromebooks, you can manage all of your devices through one centralized web page for the management console. Through the management console, you're able to control device settings and to set security controls on all of your computers. Another great thing that you're able to do through the management console is to create a customized learning environment for your students by controlling their user experience. Through the console, you can whitelist and blacklist websites. You can have web pages like your school's homepage or a specific class site automatically load when a student signs into a device. Also, 
Through just a few clicks, you're able to provide your students with access to the web-based applications you have chosen for them to use in the classroom. This customized learning environment is available to your students no matter which Chromebook they pick up. A student can sign into any device and have access to the resources that you have provided to them. Related to that, Chromebooks can be shared by many, so it fits into a one-to-one -one or one-to-many device program. From an IT perspective, Chromebooks are as, as secure as you can make a machine. They provide multiple levels of security, including sandboxing, data encryption, and verified boot. You don't have to worry about malware or viruses. Because there is no hard drive, there is nothing to attack. But don't take our word for it. Over 2,000 schools across the globe are using Chromebooks with Google Apps to enhance teaching and learning. For more information, you should join a Chromebook webinar held weekly on Wednesdays. Google Apps for Education and Chromebooks for Education are just the beginning. In this next section, we want to talk a bit more about leveraging the web to access content. After all, it is Google's mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. This manifests itself throughout all of our products, but for now, I'd like to highlight a few of our core EDU tools. Let's start with YouTube for Schools. We recognize that YouTube hosts a ton of quality educational content, but also a lot of content that you don't necessarily want your students to access during the day. YouTube for Schools allows you to bring the power of video to your classrooms for free by accessing thousands of free, high-quality educational videos in a controlled environment. You're able to block all non-EDU videos and comments. You can check out youtube.com schools for more information. With YouTube for Teachers, we've curated some of the best YouTube EDU videos by content area and grade level, making it easier and faster for you to find the content you need. Beyond YouTube, there are many other teams at Google doing work in the education space, including the search team and geo teams. For an outline of their projects and programs, check out google.com edu. For some other great ideas, like how to flip your classroom or use Google Tools for virtual field trips, check out the presentation linked here on making learning magical with Google Tools. Google Apps can connect with a variety of educational technology platforms thanks to its open APIs and valuable contributions from others in the educational software community. If you're in the market for a learning management system, gradebook, learning games, or reference tools, there are plenty to be found on the Google Apps Marketplace. The same holds true for the Chrome Web Store. The Chrome Web Store offers apps and extensions for every educational need, from collaboration tools and video editing to recorded lessons and math flashcards. Many teachers deploying Chrome devices for education want to pre-install or recommend Chrome Web Apps on their students' devices. However, given the thousands of web apps available, it's not always apparent which ones are the best for your class. Chrome has created Chrome App Packs, which are groups of popular applications from the Chrome Web Store that are tailored to meet your students' needs. So by now, all the pieces should be falling into place. You have Google Apps for Education, you have devices, and quality educational content. Know that you're not alone. At Google, we're helping to support communities across the globe to help facilitate training and professional development. Can you take a guess as to the number of students and teachers across the globe taking advantage of Google Apps for Education? Currently, we have over 20 million active users, and that number is continually growing. When you join our communities, you can connect with a growing number of schools that are already part of it. In the U.S., 72 of the top 100 colleges and universities are using Google Apps for Education, with thousands of primary and secondary institutions, colleges and universities worldwide using our tools. To connect with these organizations, we recommend joining a regional community user group. It's a place for you to ask questions, share ideas, and support fellow Google Apps users. You can also reach out to us and other users on the Google and Education Plus page. If you're interested in training opportunities, you can visit the online training center for step-by-step -step training on using our core tools in the classroom. Alternatively, you can browse through the collection of videos on the EDU On Air website. The sessions are entirely virtual, all online. All the sessions are being given using Google Plus Hangouts On Air and cover a range of topics from blended learning to becoming a search ninja. We're always adding new sessions, so keep checking the site for updates. 
We also help support a number of regional summits and meetups to help facilitate in-person training and best practice sharing. All events are listed on the News and Calendar section of the Google and Education website. Lastly, if you quickly find yourself becoming a Google Apps for Education Power user, or maybe you already are a Google guru, we'd encourage you to apply to one of our official certification programs. The Google Certified Teacher Program is designed for outstanding educators with a passion for using innovative technologies and approaches to improve teaching and learning. As a Google Certified Teacher, you're an ambassador for change who models high expectations, lifelong learning, collaboration, equity, and innovation. The Certified Trainer Program is designed for organizations and individuals who provide professional training and support to schools using Google Apps for Education. So thanks for sticking around to listen to much of what Google has to offer in education. We know that this was a lot of information, but we hope you are able to pick up a few tools or tips that you can implement in your schools or organizations. If the task seems daunting, don't worry. Just know you have to start somewhere. Can you take a guess as to what this picture is portraying? No, it's not the computer lab at your school or the server room in your IT department. It's actually a picture of the original Google.com. Since then, we've grown into a large company with offices worldwide, sharing our innovative products with the world. This photo is to encourage you to get started. Be innovative. You can make learning on the web a reality at your school. Get ready, it's going to be an amazing ride. We hope you decide to go Google.